Uh, yeah. Uh, because the offering to the Sangha is the highest, highest, highest uh, blessing, highest merit. Uh. follower and the Dhamma follower, both of them also have an understanding of the Dhamma because without an understanding of the Dhamma you cannot get right view. Uh, but in the Dhamma follower, his understanding is more pronounced. Uh, his understanding is stronger. Uh, whereas in the faith follower, he has some understanding, uh, he's already attained right view, but his faith faculty is stronger. Uh, he may not understand so much suttas. Uh, uh, but he has a lot of faith. Uh, that's a difference. Uh, uh. body in body I mentioned before uh, that uh, his focus uh, is that uh, he's contemplating on the body all his attention uh, is in the body uh, not among other thoughts uh, because sometimes you can contemplate the body at the same time uh, you can contemplate your home problems your office problems and all that uh. so here that's what you mean by body in the body and then secondly Arden Arden is uh, uh, with energy uh, uh, diligent uh. And then this clearly comprehending uh, is that Sampajanya. Uh, Sampajanya is mindful uh, with clear awareness. Uh, that means uh, he practices with clear awareness. Uh, okay. And then this one, mindful, uh, stands for Sati. Sati is he is uh, recollected. Uh, that means uh, his mind uh, is not out to the six sense doors, uh, but he is uh, recalling uh, only these four objects of sati, la, okay, you know, this is, he remembers uh, to put his attention in the right place. La. Uh, this one, having removed covetousness and grief in regard to the world, this one I mentioned before, la, that uh, if you put your attention uh, out to the six sense doors, uh, and then when there are pleasant sights, and there are pleasant sounds, uh, pleasant odors and tastes and all that, la, then you want to possess them, la. so you have covetousness. La. Uh, and then if you cannot get them, uh, then you have displeasure or grief. Uh, so in other words, uh, you give up worldly things. Uh, you give up worldly things uh, to practice your Satipatthana. Uh, if you give up worldly, worldly things, uh, then you don't have covetousness and displeasure in regard to the world. Uh, you're not chasing after worldly things. Uh. Yes, this covetousness and displeasure arise uh, when you chase after worldly things, uh, sight, sound, smell, taste, touch. Uh, and then you want to possess them, that is covetousness. Lah. You cannot get them, uh, displeasure or grief will arise. Lah. Uh, mm. So? No, but I mean, during the practice of meditation, you are contemplating, so how to... No, it's not at that one moment. It means uh, like having given up covetousness, and this pleasure in the garden. Then before you practice, uh, you already have to give up. Mm, you're still having, carrying a lot of problems on your head. Uh, you want to practice, uh, impossible. Without giving up, uh, impossible. Uh, they 
on that person's sincerity. I uh, remember there's one sutta where the Buddha said nah, he teaches different amount of Dhamma to different people because of their commitment. Nah. The Buddha says uh, those monks and nuns uh, who come and become his disciples, uh, they are fully committed to the holy path. Uh. Then uh, he teaches them the most Dhamma because they are fully committed. Nah. And then the lay persons, uh, they are half committed, uh, not fully committed. Uh. So in, in that case, uh, so the Buddha teaches them less Dharma uh, because they are not able to practice so much. Uh. Uh, no point to teach them too much when they cannot practice. And then lastly, those who are not his disciples, uh, uh, if he has the opportunity, he will teach them, but he won't be able to teach them much, much because firstly, uh, they might not be interested. Uh. So in the same way, like those uh, monks uh, who, who come and stay in our monastery and then like they take dependence, Nisaya, with the abbot. Uh, and then it is the abbot's duty to teach them. Uh. But even though it's the abbot's duty to teach them because they, they have taken dependence uh, and this, a monk uh, who has not completed five vasa, five years as a monk, uh, he has to take dependence uh, on a senior monk uh, to guide him. Uh. But sometimes even this uh, new monk, uh, we have to see his attitude. Uh. Sometimes uh, you try to correct him, uh, he rebels, uh. Uh, his temper goes up and all that. Uh. He exchanges nasty words with you sometimes. So you have to be careful. Uh. You have to see how much he can take. Uh. How much he can take, uh, you give him how much. Uh, because uh, good medicine is always bitter. Uh. <laughs> Uh, my sense is bitter, so a lot of people cannot take. Nah. So we have to see how much he can take, and then we give him. Nah. We give him too much medicine, nah. uh, he stop taking any medicine. <laughs> so there are some people, nah, you, they run away or they disrobe or something. Nah. So we have to see, I uh, have to use our wisdom to see. Nah. Uh, so there are some people, nah, if they, they want to be taught, nah, then we, it is. Yeah, it is the, the teacher's duty to teach them. But there are some people, they don't want to be taught. La. They think they know enough. So we leave it to them. Mm. Uh. Okay, shall we stop here tonight?